Sarah Jacobson, Marketing Artfully. So today we're going to start writing our blog post. And you need to figure out what you write best in. Now, it's funny, so I'm going to go to Posts, Add New, and this is going to be our new blog post. I write the very best, which makes me so happy, in WordPress, right? Like, I just write mine right inside the WordPress uh, outline. But you don't have to do that. But you have to be very careful about what you write your um, blog post in. If you're using a Mac, you want to use text edit. And you want to go to format and then make plain text. Okay. So we're going to do that. Format, make plain text. So that's going to take all of the formatting out of it. If you're using a PC, you want to use notepad. And the reason for this is if you use Word to do this, Word puts a lot of um, behind the scenes programming in it to do it. And when you post that into a web page, it really messes it up. So either use the WordPress interface, which means I don't have to cut and paste. I don't have to do anything like that. But if you don't like it, I understand completely, then either use text edit for the Mac or notepad for the PC. All right, so this is how you're going to make your outline. I started with my um, premise, my title that I'm using. So nine highly successful real estate niches to sell in. When you use a number, people like numbers. If you say, uh, like I have a hundred marketing ideas, that's somebody that wants a whole lot of information, things like that. But if you say nine, nine is kind of a, you, you, so this is common wisdom I'm giving you. I don't, I don't know. I use nine usually or seven. Um, they say that odd numbers do better. They say that um, if you, like 10 is a really good number, even though it's an even number. Um, but, but you're going to want to test this with yours. But since I have nine, right, I'm going to say one. So when I'm outlining, I can say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, another consideration for you is back in the good old days, they used to say between 350 and 500 words was a good length for blog posts. Well... If you're doing this, if you're blogging so that you can make money and you write a 350 word blog post, you're not going to get a lot of ads in there. So you want to have it be a little bit longer. And one of the good ways to do this is to make your, um, like to have a lot of different ideas in it, right? But we also want to make it regular. We want to make it like a normal, um, blog post so people will like it so what we're going to do is is start thinking of things so for me i could do first time home buyers right so that's going to be the first step in my first one that i'm going to do uh newly married newlyweds newlyweds i don't know if that's one word a lot of times what I'll go do is I'll go to Google and I'll check newly weds and then it's going to tell me, do I mean newlyweds? Yes, I mean newlyweds. Okay, it's all one word. I never like to guess. Um, second home buyers. Those are also called Oh, let's call oh, second home buyers is a is a is one by itself. And then I'm going to have move up buyers. Luxury buyers.
I'm going to have investment uh, out of town homeowners. Out of town homeowners. Like a type I would be unstoppable. Uh, let's see. What else is good? Um, okay, I'll be right back. I'm going to think of three more so you don't have to listen to me say um a lot. I got one more good one. Neighborhood niches and farms. Now, I have two more that I want to do. I could stop at seven. But what you can do if you're writing and you get a little stuck, you could do realtor niches. I could do a search for that. 50 real estate niches you could focus your marketing on. Okay, so I am not going to copy what they say, right? Because um, then you're not going to rank because they already got this, right? So millennials, Gen X, those are kind of, uh, divor divorcees might be good. Singles. Military, military could be good. Sad military. And okay, and then I'm going to say medical or academic professionals. See, all I had to do was go get a little titch of an idea, and it made me think of some more. Um, but my problem is now I have another one. So I have um, college housing buyers. All right. So now I have a problem because we, we could do 10. Let's see if we do 10 or if we come up with a few more. Foreclosures, FISBOs, I don't really want to talk about that. Commercial fixer-upper, flippers, luxury profit properties, lofts, oceanfront ranch, lake house, gated. Those are going to be my farms, new construction, single family vacation. Do, 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 do. Okay. All right. So that's good. So we'll do 10. So now I have to remember to go up here and say 10 highly successful niche, real estate niches to selling. Okay, so this first run through is just literally a run through. I just wanted to get 10 ideas on the paper. But now I, um, I am not a huge proponent of working with buyers, so I got to move this guy down here. I don't want it to be one of my first ones. I can move it down here. Um, I want... Okay, let's move luxury up. Newlyweds. Okay. Newlyweds are actually first time home buyers and oops. And newlyweds. Okay, perfect. So I can delete this one, and I can go back to nine. Yay, me. All right. Luxury home buyers, second home buyers, move up buyers and sellers. Move up buyers and sellers is better than luxury, is better than second home. Out of town homeowners, niches. I like that. I like that. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to put these in order. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I number them this way because I want to make sure that I have the number that I said in the top. I've done things where I've said 13 the whole way through. I've published it and realized I had 12. And then I had to go back and redo an extra one, even though I didn't have a good idea, right? All right, so now what you can do is you can do you can do it any way you want, okay? Um, I tend to uh, 
to go through and write just a ton about each one. You could do another layer of outline, and so luxury home buyers and sellers, so I could say luxury buyers, I could say luxury sellers, I could say double dip, which means they have both sides, they have the buyer and the seller, double dip luxury, move up buyers and sellers, so you have uh, uh, buying a bigger home, you get the starter home listing great lifetime value okay second home buyers okay so you could do it that way and kind of you know do subheadings for all of these i don't tend to have to do that because i've been writing for years and i write usually at least two to five blog posts a week so I can crank them out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you on pause. I'm going to write my blog post and I'm going to show you what it looks like and how we can kind of see how many um, words we've gotten to, things like that. All right. I have gone through and filled out all of the different parts of my um, nine real estate niches that we were talking about. And so the one thing that I did notice is I, I don't know that highly successful is, I mean, it's a nice way to put it, but my keyword is real estate niches. So as long as I leave that keyword in there, what I figured out was that some of these are really unique, right? And so I'm going to change this to unique real estate niches to sell in. So, because that's way more of a draw, people are like unique. Remember we did the little bit of research and there were 50 real estate niches. Well, those could be any real estate niches, but I wrote a really good post that talks about unique ones that people haven't thought of. I give them a lot of marketing information. I mean, like this is a high value post that's very high quality. And so I feel very comfortable saying that these are unique real estate niches. All right, so that is how to write our post. The next video that we're going to do is to how to work on our headings. So hopefully that helped. Tara Jacobson, Marketing Artfully.